All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link with whoever you can. Today our topic is about outdated beliefs in Islam. Now, uh, the title says, 10 shocking, but the fact everything in Islam is shocking and outdated. But we will speak about some of it. We cannot cover everything in a short video. Uh, you know, we hear always Muslims speaking about how amazing the Quran, how amazing the teaching of Allah, uh, scientific discovery in the Quran, which is absolutely false and nothing but fabrication. But because you don't speak Arabic, we can change the translation to make it fit with the, what it's called science, and we say Quran teaching science. Marmaid. Marmaid is what Islam promises us. But the difference is that those females, they are in heaven, not in the water, and we can see through the marrow of their bones. But first, let us start, see what the Arab in the time of Muhammad said about the Quran. Islam is outdated since the time of Muhammad, not now. If you go in the Quran, we will find tons of verses, as we see in the screen. The Arab saying to Muhammad, this is nothing but fiction and fairy tale stories. We heard that before you are even born. All those verses in the front of us saying the same. You can click at any trans any any verse you want, and you will see all of them are saying the same. So Muhammad he came with stories which is nothing but the tales of the ancient, fairy tales of the ancient, and the Arab they say to him, We know those fairy tales before you, and they are nothing but fairy tales. And they accuse him to be a liar. They did not say, uh, well. You are saying something we don't accept. They are saying, we are saying something we knew already. It's a fairy tale. We heard it before you. And as you see, this is all over the Quran. Not once, not twice. It's all over. It is nothing but the tales of the ancient. And the tales of ancients is all over the Quran. As an example, from the ancient belief that if a man have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. If a woman have orgasm first, the baby will be a girl. And Muhammad, he adopt this and he make it his own science, claiming that his God taught him that. But all of us, we knew that this is nothing but false. It's a fairy tale. Even Muhammad, he claimed that the sperm of the man stay in the women for 50 days and this is where the baby is created from if we go in the Quran we will find the Quran is speaking about things which is really crazy and far away from being truthful or even close to be truthful let us see this one as an example as an example remember All those verses in the Quran is speaking about the sperm. But maybe you do not know that Muhammad claimed that Allah, he transformed the sperm into a dead blood. And this is how the baby is made from. And the reason the ancient, the fairy tale stories, where this is coming from, because when women, she have, uh, 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 you know, this courage, she uh, bleed a lot. And, uh, uh, you know, like the baby is not complete yet. So like a piece of meat is coming out if he is like in, uh, in late age uh, or, or, or a stage of, uh, of the uh, embryo. So the ancient believe that the sperm, because the man, he insert a sperm and then we got a baby. So it's obviously it is the sperm, the ejaculation of the man is what making the baby. And that is become a blood. And as you see, Muhammad here is explaining in a very funny way how the baby is created. Yet the Muslims, if you watch their videos, they claim that this is a scientific miracle. Now, have you ever heard of uh, any scientist except that the sperm transform into a congealed dead blood? That is impossible. For the Muslims, in order to change this, which is hilarious, they try to play with the translation to fix it. But it's too late. Because as you see, Muhammad, he made it clear 
that the one who have orgasm first he will decide the gender of the baby to the point even Muhammad he claimed that uh, in chapter uh, 86 verse number uh, uh, six and seven uh, that women have a sperm coming from her ribs and the man have a sperm coming from his backbone and actually uh, if you go here as an example, this is Ibn Kathir. Let me show you on the screen. Ibn Kathir is supposedly a Muslim scholar who came way after Islam, actually, which means he make him more, uh, let us say, educated to defend Islam. And actually, Ibn Kathir, he did not make his books to uh, to explain Islam as much as to defend Islam. So you see in, uh, Ibn Kathir in the mood of defense, saying the following. That Allah He created the, uh, the man from gushing uh, uh, water gushing forth, meaning the sexual fluid that comes out of breast in forth from the man and the woman. Thus, the child will not proceed or produce. Sorry, it will, it will produce from both of them by the permission of Allah. And then He says, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. This is the Quran now, meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman. So Islam, with the outdating fiction stories from the old people you know nations before they believe that okay women she feed baby from her breast and uh, you know look like the source of life for the baby from the breast so they come to a conclusion so women she have a sexual fluid and that sexual fluid make the baby happen and it's coming from her breast and actually from the location of the necklace exactly and Muhammad he explained that by the help of his God and he says Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman It is a fluid uh, the fluid of the woman is yellow and fine in texture and the child will not be born Except from both of them ie the sexual fluid and this is absolutely this is false and this is not smart at all But this is what we saw when the Arabs say to Muhammad. This is nothing but the fairy tale stories We heard it before you so Muhammad and the Muslims after him try to defend the Quran and try to explain and try to say to you uh, now actually nowadays they refuse to say oh this is the Quran saying from the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women but the fact it does say is that as you see and this is not our website this is the Muslim website and this is their books and we can read all the interpretation Muhammad even he tried to explain for a woman who have a dream sexual dream and he ex explained to his wife uh, when his wife she was surprised that women she have this charge as you see in the hadith here and the word hadith for those who do not know is a speech of the prophet or his companion uh, so the messenger of Allah a woman she came to him and she said if a woman she see dream the same as the man he see and you know what I'm talking about the messenger of Allah said if she sees if she sees that she has this charge so she have to perform a bath Okay, this is she's it is something she sees sees where in her private part Umu Salama said the wife of the Prophet Oh message of Allah does that really happen? Which means does the women have this charge because obviously the wife of Muhammad never have this charge He said yes, the water of the man is thick and white and the water of the women is thin and yellow Which one of them comes first? The baby resemble the parent which mean either a girl or a boy and this is absolutely false and funny. So Muhammad claimed that when the women she have a sexual fluid in her private part, that what make the baby. And the man sexual fluid is white, and the women's sexual fluid is thin and fine, and that both is a sperm. This is why the Quran says we created man from a sperm, but the sperm is the sperm of the man and the sperm of the women, as we showed you in chapter 86, verse number six and seven. If we continue with more fairy tale stories in the Quran, which is endless, but we will show some to keep the video limited. The Quran teach that the best way to treat your family, to have a successful family, is to beat your wife. And the Quran teach that if a man, if a man is married, he is in charge of the woman, and this is in chapter four, verse number thirty-four. The reason for that Allah gave him the charge because simply he spent his money on the wife so the reason Allah he says men are in charge of women because Allah had made one of them excel on the other because they spend of their property to support the women so because the man he supports you by his money now he have the right to do the following 
so good women is the one who obedient guardian in secret which Allah has guarded and as those who you fear rebellion here rebellion is not about a woman she is uh, like uh, she is uh, cheating or no like you said your wife makes some tea for me and she make a noise like she is not happy with it that is a fear rebellion that she is going to go rebellion she don't like the order so those women admonish them which means scream at them says you know don't do that again uh, punish them in the beds this first translation it says jail them in the beds bedroom you jail them in their bedroom and scourge them however you can choose which one of them you want to do all of them one alone depend in the situation so because you spend some money in the women you have the right to beat her and this is not only outdated this is disgusting because what is the marriage is about is not about a man beating the wife she is not even in America even if you beat a, a dog you go to jail so what about beating a woman and this is in the Quran today and the Muslim they say to us that the Quran here saying beat the wife with toothbrush imagine they try to convince us that the Quran is speaking about beating the women with toothbrush as if we are a bunch of fool but if we go in the hadith we will find that a man he did beat his wife until he made her skin greener than her clothes and the Prophet he took the side of the man and he never questioned the man about beating his wife in fact he gave him this verse saying men are in charge of women so beat them as you wish so when a woman she came to Aisha Aisha she she saw Aisha how her skin is a greener than her garment and Aisha she said not me look I have not seen she said to Muhammad I have not seen any a woman suffering as much as a believing woman which mean Aisha she was witnessing that from all the women who live in town the most suffering women are Muslims why because of the following look her skin is a greener than her clothes and why because the husband he was trying to force his wife into bed and he was beating her which mean he is doing a rape and Muhammad he took the side of the man and oppressing the women forcing her to the bed and saying to her if your intention to go back to the previous husband because Muhammad he made a rule that if a woman she is divorced three times she cannot go back to the previous husband to marry him again unless she sleep with the new man so now this woman she obviously she married this man and she don't want to sleep with him so Muhammad is taking the side of the man who did beat her until he made his her skin agreeing that her clothes and saying if this is what you think you can do you cannot which means he have the right to beat you and you have still to sleep with him so the uh, uh, the, the prophet he uh, uh, acknowledged the rape and he approved it and this is not only outdated this is shocking and this is disgusting if we go to different stories in the Quran or different stories in the hadith or different stories in, in you know like all over the resource of Muslims we will find tons of astonishing funny stories as an example in chapter 18 verse number 86 the Quran claimed that the Sun sit in the murky water and the Muslim today they try to explain that and say oh this is how Zul Qurnayn which is the guy in the story he saw it the fact that's not true it is Allah who is talking reporting what happened to Zul Qurnayn and however we have the help of a man his name Prophet Muhammad as Muslim they call him he prove to us that Muslims when they say that they are not being truthful because Muhammad he said clearly that this is how the Sun uh, said uh, the Sun set in the murky water uh, I was sitting behind the Messenger of Allah who was riding donkey while the Sun was sitting he asked do you know where this is set I replied Allah and his apostles know best he said it's set in the spring of warm of warm water the fact it's not really warm water it's boiling water Hamia so so Muhammad he confirmed where the Sun set as the Quran said that it is yes it's set in a dirty muddy boiling water and it's not an ocean because remember the verse here saying spring never mention the word ocean the most time they will say to you Zulqarnayn he thought when he saw it sitting in the Sun that in the in the ocean like uh, uh, disappear behind the ocean he thought this but this is not what the Quran is saying Allah is saying that the Sun this is where the Sun said and actually Muhammad he reported many times 
that the sun disappear and the sun goes from point A to point B as we see in those hadith in the front of us all of those hadith report for us one thing that the sun go and disappear actually in one of the hadith Muhammad he claimed that the sun go and uh, set between the two horn of shaitan and this is another side of Islam shocking belief Muhammad as the ancient fairy tale stories we showed you in the Quran it says that he believed that shaitan he sat between the two horn or sorry the sun set between the two horn of Satan the reason for that because the Arab they hated the sun and they loved the moon this is why Islam is a moon God religion the sun for the people of the desert was always nothing but death death and thirst and no grass and their animals dying and the heat so they hate it while the moon was romantic nice and kind where we can walk and we are not fearing death because of the very powerful sun of the desert so the, they have an ancient fairy tale that the sun is the god of the devil she is god powerful god but she is evil she is uh, trying to destroy us and i challenge muslim to say to us where muhammad he got this that the sun rises from between the two horn of satan that is funny so if you go again you will see that muhammad he come from many superstitions fairy tale stories claiming that those are knowledge given to him from god even muhammad he said as we will see in the screen let us open the hadith Muhammad always he liked to you know to educate uh, his uh, his uh, followers. Uh, Muhammad he said, "Do you know where the sun goes?" And then Muhammad he said, "The sun goes and sit under the throne of Allah," which means the, the 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 two horn of Shaitan is under the throne of Allah, and this is where the sun set. In different hadith, Muhammad he said that the throne of Allah is above the water. Actually, Muhammad he believed that there is water. There is a throne of God and his throne is above the water and this is before the creation was created which mean before there is a sky before there is an earth before there is a stars there was nothing but the following read carefully it was narrated by the prophet saying that there was nothing let us see here I heard the messenger of Allah saying Allah ordained the measure and the quality of the creation 50,000 years before his creation the heaven and the earth and his throne was above the water so there was water before he created the heaven and the earth let us read this one uh, let us see I said, O oh Allah Messenger, where was our Lord before He created His creation? Which means before He created anything, the heaven, the earth, everything. He said, He was above the cloud, below was air, and above which was air and water. So this is before anything, there was a cloud, and Allah is between the cloud, and His throne is above the water. And this is all is a fiction stories taken from other religion and beliefs. And remember, Muhammad and Muslims agree that the Kaaba was the house of the pagan before Islam and the, the pagan they kissed the black stone and the black stone was white here we find another fiction story from Muhammad which is we find it very shocking story but that will lead us today to talk about something very disgusting which is racism Islam is religion which teach racism in a very aggressive way this is Muhammad claiming that Allah created the white to go to heaven and the black to go to hell Allah messenger said Allah created Adam when he created him and uh, and he struck his right shoulder and from there emitted the white of spring as if they were white ants and he struck his left shoulder and there emitted from it a uh, uh, black of spring as if they were circle he said then he said and uh, uh, to those who they are emitted from the right shoulder which means the white people uh, for paradise and I don't mind which means I don't care and then to those who they are emitted 
from the left shoulder which means they are black he said go to hell and I don't mind so the religion of Islam which Muslims always try to present it that it is anti-racism when in fact Islam is Arab supremacist white culture believe they believe that we are the Arab and I am an Arab that Arab are supremacist and they are white people and black are created for uh, for evil reason and the white are created for good reason and this is absolutely disgusting and not only it's outdated it's stupid because remember uh, uh, you know uh, the quality have nothing to do with color quality of a human being have nothing to do with his color you can be Asian and you can be better than me you can be a black and you can be better than me and vice versa so quality and color have nothing to do with each other if you give a person education he will do behave differently from a person who live in an area which is poor no education etc so we are the children's of the environment where we are growing in so if I grow in a poor environment what you expect from me I never go to school I never learn something and maybe uh, I have to, to, to make a living and maybe I have to steal so we cannot judge a human being by his color as Muhammad saying and actually this is not only in the hadith but Muhammad he confirmed that Allah will make all those who they are bad black and all those who they are good white so if you go in the Quran we will find the following let us see here uh, chapter 3 verse 106 it says yawma tabyaddu wuju wa taswaddu wuju the day Allah will make faces black and faces white so what the Muslims believe this is not metaphorically this is literally to the point in chapter 27 verse number 82 Ibn Kathir explained that according to Muhammad a jassasa which is a beast and this beast will come from the ground and will have the staff of Moses and will hit people in their faces either by the staff of Moses or the ring of Solomon and all those who they are bad Allah will make them black and all those who they are good Allah will make them white so uh, uh, you know which is not only uh, a fiction story and stupid story but it is disgusting to say that no people enter heaven unless they are white and no people enter hell unless they are black and if a Muslim want to say this is not Islamic teaching well we can go right now and we can show the reference for what we are saying if we go right now in chapter 27 the end chapter verse number 82 and this is your books this is your scholar I have nothing to do with it let us zoom in and see what it says there is a beast will emerge from the earth which is nothing but fiction story again this is not metaphorical this is real supposedly it's a beast who will teach people Quran he will speak Arabic and he is going to you know he's going to speak to you and he will even teach you Quran and he will punish you for not being a person who knows Quran and Muhammad he claimed that there is a signs of the judgment day and one of them the beast will come from the ground and this beast is called a Jassasa and the Sun will come from the West why the Sun will come from the West because Allah will order the Sun to go back where it's coming from which is another fiction story because the, the Sun set and the Sun rise is just a visual thing for us it's not real but according to Muhammad as we showed you the Sun set in the murky water every day and one day Allah will order the Sun in order to appear from the East to appear from the West however here we see that there is a Jassasa which is the beast and the beast have a very uh, funny and weird description uh, let us see where the description says let us see here uh, just to give you an idea about how it looked like uh, okay here we go I think okay 
the description of the beast its head is like the head of a bull its eyes like the eyes of a pig its ears like the ears of an elephant its horn like the horn of a stag its neck like the neck of an ostrich its chest like the chest of a lion its color like the color of a tiger its hinges like the hinges of a cat its tail like the tail of a ram and its leg like the leg of a camel between each pair of joints a distance of 12 cubit so this is the jassasa which is going to come and will have the, sta the staff of Moses, as you see here. It will bring with it the staff of Moses and the ring of cinnamon. So Islam teach that the staff of Moses is a magical staff and the ring of cinnamon is a magical, the same as the Lord of the Ring movie, uh, Hori Putter. So the ring of cinnamon, which is a powerful ring, have power of magic to control the two words, the word of the genie and the word of the human. And we will talk about that soon, that Muslims believe in something called genie, which is nothing but fiction. So there's a genie and there's a human, and both of them, they are controlled either by the staff of Moses and the ring of cinnamon. And this is the, this this beast is going to hit the believer in his face, will make a small white spot, and this white will be very white. And that whiteness will spread until his body will be totally white as a result. And will do the same to the person who don't believe in Islam, like me and you. And he will hit him, and he will make a black spot in his face. And then he will turn all his face and his body into black person as a result. Actually, Muhammad, he made it clear that the most person Allah he hate is someone he is a black man, which is very disgusting. Another fact about Islam, Islam as a supremacist cult, believe that Muslims they have the right to enslave you and take you into slavery This is Muhammad talking and he is quoting the Quran chapter 3 verse number 10 And we can find the same hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari as we see here The verses says you Muslims are the best of people ever raised for mankind when you hear this Muslims It's a Quran saying you are the best of man people for the for the benefit of mankind this is what the Muslim they say they insert the word benefit you said to yourself that's wonderful so Allah he wanted the Muslims to be for the benefit of us but the fact it is the opposite mean the best people for the people as the one you Muslims you bring them and the chains around their necks until they embrace Islam so a Muslim who is a good Muslim a true Muslim is not the one who says to you oh you can be Christian I can be a Muslim is not those who go in the stage and try to fool us saying Islam is a tolerance religion. The true Muslim is the one who go and do jihad and put the chain around your neck until you embrace Islam. That is the teaching of Muhammad. And as you see, this is Muhammad here giving interpretation for chapter 3 verse 110. So the best of Muslims are the one who enslave you, not the one who give you a hug and say, I want to live with you in peace. So this is not only outdated, this is not only uh, uh, disgusting, that is violence. And now, as long as we are talking about violence, outdated cults, always they come with violence. Because violence is the way to force your opinion on others. The Muslim, they say that Muhammad was defending himself when he attack others but we just saw that Muhammad saying that the best of you is the one who attack others and enslave them to force them to come to Islam the Quran says that you have to fight you have to fight those who don't believe in Allah and the last day if we go in the Quran we will find this in chapter 9 verse number uh, 29 and be aware always that Muslims translation for the Quran is totally a fabrication however we still use it to prove to you how uh, how aggressive this cult is read with me here fight against such those who have been given the scriptures so this is an order to fight and kill the Christians and the Jews specifically as they believe not so what the reason to fight them because they believe not in Allah nor the last day which mean what Muhammad he came with and forbidden what Allah forbid which mean Islam and forbidden by the messenger which means they don't accept Muhammad and follow not the religion of truth which means Islam so what is the reason to kill them they refuse Islam so what do they say to us the prophet he fight those who fight him the verse is so clear and this is why we find in the hadith Muhammad saying I've been ordered to kill all mankind not to fight to kill 
You see the word uqatil, it's to fight, to kill. Umirtu and uqatil and nasa jamia. I've been ordered to fight and kill all mankind until they say and testify the shahada, which may convert to Islam, as you see in the front of you. And they have to pay the zakat. You have to pay Muhammad. And you have to slaughter as Muhammad is slaughter. And you have to eat as he eat. And you have to pray as he pray. And then and only then, Muhammad will not take your wife and your child and your women as six slaves if you do that. So look how many reference and all of them, they are very authentic, proven by all Muslims. Muhammad have an order to have a global war, war, global war on all mankind, not in a specific group. Anyone who is a human, he have obligation to fight him and the Muslims to follow. I have been ordered to fight the people, which means all man people, all, all the all the people, and nas and nas jamian, all people, till they say none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and they pray like us. Not only you say shahada, you have to pray like them. And you have to face the Kaaba too. Not only you say I'm a Muslim, and they slaughter as a slaughter, which means you have to eat as Muhammad ordered you to eat, which means you have to take Islam in every step in your life, otherwise, you are still going to be slaughtered. So if you do all of this, then and only then your blood and your property will be sacred to us. So Muhammad will not, he is saying it clearly, I'm a thief, I will take your wife, I will take your children, and I will kill you unless you do as I say. This is not only outdated, this is disgusting. And this is what bringing the world into chaos. Today we have many wars, all of them in Islamic countries, and everyone says, I am following the Prophet Muhammad to make the earth better. So it is a holy war, holy duty, and the purpose supposedly noble purpose. They want to save you from going to hell. How? We attack you, and we either you convert or you die. So, uh, 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 you know, uh, we saw many people saying uh, ISIS is not Islam, but pff, I challenge anyone to show me one thing ISIS they did is not Islamic and not done by the Prophet. Now we continue. We have tons of things to speak about, actually, not only about the vi violent. Violence is just a little thing of the teaching of Muhammad. Uh, one of the teaching of Islam that if you have a child which is born of uh, woodlock, which means from adultery. You can have sex with this child, and this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, chapter 25, verse number 54. And this is the interpretation of Al Qurtubi. And actually, today we made an, a, a Muslim read that for us, and they cannot deny that Islam teaches that if you have a daughter from a girlfriend, she is lawful for you, and you can sleep with her, and she is not considered as a daughter. And she cannot inherit the last name of her father and she cannot get a child support and that is evil because you step with the mother and now you have a child and not only you will not and you don't have to give any of your name your money your support to this baby in the top of that you are allowed to rape that baby that is disgusting and here the reference in the front of us for any muslim you will say that this is not a true we know we did read this in the previous video and here it says so because she is not your daughter according to the most accurate belief in islam this is the most accurate the scholars agree upon because she is not your daughter, for Islam only considered daughter to be from marriage. If she is out of marriage, if she is from marriage, then she is forbidden for you. If she is the daughter from adultery, then she is not forbidden for you to sleep with her. And there is no support for her. And this is nothing, not only outdated, this is shocking and disgusting. That there is a religion saying to you, you can have sexual relationship with your child. Additional to that, as long as we are talking about this, remember that Muhammad, uh, himself he did marry a child and here we need to ask ourselves is that outdated from the time of Muhammad or this is outdated now the fact 
uh, in the time of Muhammad, yes, people they used to get married, or or let us say females, they get married very very early. But not only females, even male, but not six year old baby. That is disgusting. So you might find uh, uh, someone she is thirteen or even fourteen getting married because when the when when the female she get her period, her family now they knew she is ready. She is a woman, so now she can get married. But nobody married children, and I am an Arab and I can witness that is never happened in history of Arabia, and this is disgusting. So the Prophet of Islam he come with the new belief that children's are lawful in a very early age this is not only outdated this is disgusting and this is not ethical Muhammad he forbid even people to do adoption which is was very noble in the time of uh, uh, the Arab just because he wanted to have his own son wife and yes he took her and even he flirted with the wife when the husband was away and this is all written in Islamic books now if we continue we will see tons of on more and more stories about the fictions and the madness in the Quran and one of them is the following chapter 55 verse number 33 Muhammad he thought and he never thought in the same time that nobody can go out to the sky no one so he said that Allah he made a challenge to all genie and mankind that you cannot penetrate out of the zone of the earth and the heaven and if you can try and if you try Allah will shoot you with stars but as we know that today we have spaceship and we have people going to the moon and actually in a few years from now America will send the second uh, spaceship have one man and one woman which may make it the first woman ever to go to the moon and land in the moon and I hope that will be successful so Muhammad he claimed that his God saying that if anyone tried to leave the earth Allah will shoot him with a star and this is simply proving another superstition teaching of Muhammad as an example uh, Muhammad claimed that the genie did try to steal information from Allah so they try to go out of the zone of the earth and he explained what is the uh, meteor we see in the sky he Muhammad he believed that the meteor we see in the stars those are the, in the sky those are really stars and Allah he shoot the shaitan with them if you read with me chapter 15 and here we see verse number 16 and verily in the heaven we have set mentions of stars and we have beautified it for the beholder which is false by the way because the stars which we see by eyes is very limited in number while the major number of stars which may be billions nobody knows how many we cannot count and we cannot see and actually this is in total agreement with the bible and then he says and we have guarded it from every outcast devil guarding what guarding the sky the muslims in their false article they say this is about the atmosphere but the fact is the opposite direction it is the shaitan the genie he cannot leave the earth not about the genie he cannot enter the earth so he guarded the sky and if shaitan he tried to go of this to the sky and as you see Allah he created the stars here for two reasons number one for decoration and number one number two is to shoot the devil save him who steals the hearing and them doth the clear flame pursue in different uh, uh, in different verse in the Quran it says the following just to make it more clear Muhammad he made it so clear that Allah he will shoot the shaitan in his bum if he try to go out of the zone of the earth and verily we purified this is chapter number 67 verse number 5 and verily we beautified the word heaven with lamps and we made those lamps as missiles for the devil and for them we have prepared the doom of a flame so what the God of Islam claim nothing but fictions and as you see this is the fairy tale stories so Islam not only outdated Islam is a crazy cult full of fictions as an example maybe you heard about the flying carpet the flying carpet the Lord of the ring is all mentioned in the Quran if we go in the Quran uh, it says the following I was trying to make the, uh, the the video short, but it's impossible to make. 
such a thing you know short if you go in chapter 21 verse number 81 you will see the Quran is speaking about the flying carpet of Suleiman where he ordered it and this flying carpet carry him and carry more than 600,000 chairs on it and all his kingship equipment and war in the top of it and he fly with it in a day which is by noon time he can reach the distance of one month journey by the camel which is very slow by the way so here you notice that Islam not only outdated Islam is very 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 outdated and then you will see Muhammad teaching the Muslims that Suleiman he have a ring and the string can control the genie the shayateen and they do what for him they do diving to bring him pearl and jewelries so Suleiman he have a, a team of uh, of everything uh, uh, and maybe you do not know that Suleiman he have uh, an army which is made of a human genie and birds birds can you believe that there is somebody believe in such a thing yes that is Islam my friend so if we say this is outdated I think this is not only outdated this is a crazy but yet the Muslim today they try to make it or to make Islam as a religion of science as an example in the story uh, Suleiman he spoke and he heard the ant and if we if we ask uh, if you go to the chapter of the ant you will find that Suleiman he was amused or a mean sorry by uh, the speech of the ant and the ant she sent to her friends hide before Suleiman he crush you but as we know ants don't talk they communicate as all the creatures they communicate but what what Suleiman uh, story is saying according to Allah that he was amazed by her speech he heard her even saying his name the ant she said till when they reach the valley of the ants the ant ex ex like uh, express oh ants enter your dwelling lest Suleiman and his army will crush you and here there is many you know it's a, it's, a, it's a good for cartoon to believe that there is an ant and there's an uh, she is the one uh, warning the other ants and uh, you have to hide because there's a king his name is Solomon how the ant she knew the name of the king we do not know and Solomon he heard he smiled when he heard and he laughed when he heard her speech but and they communicate only by chemical or vibration so what speech we're talking about how the ant she said the name of Solomon in her language Morse language that is very funny and this is very nothing but fairy tale stories and here you will see and we are and there we are gathered together into Solomon his army of jinn and jinn is a creation made of a fire and even the Muslim believe that genie they can have sex with their females this is why Muslims they have to recite certain verses in the bedroom otherwise genie he might sleep with his wife and that is very embarrassing actually there's a Muslim guy supposedly he opened the, the door the door of his room and he found his wife doing something so the sheikh explained to him that this is, must be a genie and you have to read the Quran the chapter of the chair upside down his army of jinn and uh, humankind and the birds so Suleiman he have an army as the one you see in the cartoon chicken army bird turkey bird bird army from all kind of birds so you have an army of birds you have an army of a human and you have an army of genie this is all for Suleiman all right how he controlled them he controlled them by the ring how and, and by the way Allah he taught Suleiman the language of the birds but yet Suleiman he understand the ant which is very weird as you see Allah he taught Suleiman the language of the birds but few verses after we find that Suleiman he understand the ant it's like saying I want to teach you the language of the dogs and then you understand the cow very weird so Quran is a collection of fiction stories and those stories by the way is coming from the legion of the Jews and I'm talking here specifically about the stories of Suleiman all those stories you find it from the legion of the Jews so Muhammad he lived between the Jews and whatever the Jews they tell their kids before bedtime Muhammad he took it he put it in the Quran and he accepted it as a reality so how we can accept Islam to be from God that is impossible with this I'm going to stop because the video became longer than I thought I'm going to make it and 
we will go back live on air again maybe later uh, keep your alarm on I might go arrive maybe an hour from now I'm not sure but if not then by tomorrow actually already we are tomorrow so I want to say thank you download the videos and don't forget if you like to learn more about the fictions and the and, and the crazy teaching of Islam you can always reach and get my books from Amazon we have them in many languages French Spanish English and Swedish and uh, uh, you name it uh, German so you can search in Amazon of your country and you can get the book uh, from the website of your country so I want to say thank you for being here may the Lord bless you and if you are really convinced after what you heard and as you see we are showing you all the reference and the proofs if you are really convinced it's time from God don't forget to leave a comment and tell us why I mean do you really believe in flying carpet do you really believe that's a man he have a genie who died for him do you believe really that's a man he married a woman she is half genie half a human do you really believe that uh, 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 you know uh, 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 Suleiman, he uh, uh, he fly from different from country to country just to find the women she have no hair in her legs. So, uh, tell us what you believe and tell us why you believe in those stories. Do you really believe if a man have orgasm first, the baby will be uh, 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 the bent in the one who have orgasm first, the woman or the man? So, if you believe in this crazy stuff, please leave your comment. If you are a Muslim, and you are more than welcome to explain to us how this is, can be a religion and how you can believe in it. And by the way, I don't want to forget. I forgot something. What about this? Do you really believe that God will give you women in heaven who the, we can see the marrow of their bones? Do you really believe in this? And you know, uh, I, not only I find this uh, uh, weird, but I understand where Muhammad he got us from. The word Hur, which is speaking about very white women, is coming from the Zaradisht believe, the Iranian, the Persian, who believe that in heaven there are special creatures who they are very beautiful women who have a certain look. They are very white, but Muhammad, he exaggerate with his promises. And he went far to the point saying that we will see uh, their bones, even the marrow of their bones. And this is not only, I mean, crazy. It's, it's, it doesn't look good. I mean, you promise me I will go to heaven and I will find a woman. And this woman, she is like this. I'm not sure if I will like this view at all. I think I will be scared. I think I will prefer to be single forever. I think I don't want to be next to any women like that. So when Muhammad he promised us such a promise, how this is can be from God, and how a human being can accept this? And this is supposed to be beauty, and that will encourage me to believe in Muhammad. But the reason of Muhammad is speaking about how those women look like. And we will see the flesh and the, we will see it through the flesh and the marrow of their bones because the Arab they are racist and they favor white women the more white you are the more they like you so and I'm an Arab remember I'm not talking about different people I know my people this is our culture so which is a very sad culture see here you see so Muhammad he, he speak to the Arab he knew what the Arab they like he's trying to tempt them in extreme promises those women they will be so white to the point you will see the marrow of their bones now you be the judge do you accept this to be from God and if this is God which God is that learn more read more watch more of my videos and don't forget to subscribe and thank you very much for being here may the Lord bless you Christ is Lord and nothing about his time is it true it is nothing but that ancient tales fairy tale stories and here we expose it take care and get a blessing